and welcome back to Let's Play Baldur's Gate. Last time when we left off, we had just arrived for the second time at the town of Nashkill, but this time we've got the whole party already. We're not rushing anything. We're simply honestly exploring, so we're ready to actually explore the town of Nashkill. And we're going to emerge from this town, I mean, spoiler alert, already significantly better off than when we and that's even without doing any fighting or questing to gain any kind of experience points. I'm excited. There's good stuff to find, and that's literally the first thing we're going to do. So I'll give folks a few minutes to trickle in. I know I fired it up a little early. Lone Wonder, hey, how are you, my friend? It's always, you have to fight the instinct when you're talking. Like, you want you want to look at the chat message where I can read what you're saying, but in actuality, I should look at the camera so it looks like I'm making eye contact with you. Anyway, hey, Lone Wonder, how are you, my friend? I'm doing very well. Thanks for asking. As, as Tuesdays go, this is a pretty darn good one. Infinimora, hello. Good to see you, my friend. Welcome, welcome. Lovely to have you, as always. Let's see, it's 7.55. I've been live two minutes. My advertised start time was 8. I'll fire up the game at 7.58, five minutes into the stream. That seems fair to me. <laughs> Tea bag man. <laughs> um, I'm. It's gonna be a no from me, dog. But that's funny. Carefree, hello. New clothes. Well, new clothes are always kind of fun. It's it's funny because when you're a kid, you uh, you know, you hate getting new clothes at Christmas. It just feels like it's fun. But I think once you're an adult, new clothes can really feel great, and you can get really excited about them. So congratulations on that. Hi, Petey. Welcome back to the stream. Good to have you here. Welcome, welcome, everybody. What's everyone else been up to this fine Tuesday? Usually the worst day of the week. Let's try to make it a little better. It's like Monday, I know people hate Mondays because it's the end of the weekend and you have to go back to work, but Monday you at least have the virtue of theoretically feeling refreshed because you've just come off of a weekend. Like Wednesday, you're halfway through the week, so you can start to get excited. Thursday, there's only one work day left. Friday is Friday. And then you're at the weekend. Tuesday, no redeeming qualities at all. Tuesday sucks. Tater! Hey, buddy, how are you? Diablo 3. Oh, that's a fun one. What class are you playing? Or do you have a rotation? Are you doing a uh, Are you doing season eighteen? There's gin mixed in this fresco. We're gonna get a little bit of a buzz going on. What do you mean the September games? Borderlands 3, Greedfall, or Gears 5? Oh, you mean just 
big releases that are coming out in September? Um, probably not any of those. <laughs> at least, at least not for the channel. Um, on my own time, I would, um, I'd be the most interested in Borderlands Three. All right, people have had enough time to show up. Let's fire up the game. As a sorcerer. Ah, interesting. So you don't have to memorize spells. Alright, so here we are at Nashville. With Helm's blessing. We've already been accosted by the omnis omnis omnish soldier. Yeah, I can talk. But we want to head over to the west of the bridge and head south along this side of the river and start hitting that tab button. Oh, and um, I did want to mention too the lootable containers being highlightable by tab button. Er, tab feature, not button. Tab is the button, obviously. But I'm pretty sure that's an enhanced edition enhancement. I don't think it worked in the original game. My experience, um, well, I'll show you right quick. Let's just, uh, let's rip through the character sheets. So, Ajantis hit level 3, Jahira's at 2 and 2, Viconia's at 3, Minsk is at 2, to Emma wins at three. Protag is still at one and one, but he's getting close. He is, in his defense, the only character who starts with zero experience. So you see this little hole in the ground right over next to this tree. Check out the amazingly good shit in this hole. This is a pearl. Pearls consist of layers of aragonite agonizingly formed around a bit of grit or other irritant inside oysters and other mollusks. The resulting pearl has a rich, deep luster. Most of the pearls in the realms are white. However, there are varieties that are much more rare, such as rainbow and black. We're going to take that. Yeah, it's the second. Oh, I can just have that on persistently. Well, that's a little cheese ball. But, the other Ankeg Plate Mail! Oh yeah, baby! This is going on Viconia because Ankeg Plate Mail is amazing for two reasons. First of all, it has ridiculously good armor class. Second of all, it's insanely light. It only weighs 25, and you can wear it with a strength of 8. We're giving it to Viconia. Just, that's happening. Mutton-mongering riffraff. This plate mail has been expertly crafted by Tehram Fuiruim of Baragost. Sheathed in the chitinous scales of the Ankeg, it provides a greater degree of protection than traditional plate mail and is not susceptible to rust. As any world-weary adventurer will tell you, however, the best appreciated aspect of Ankeg Mail is its lightweight and low encumbrance. Monsters come and go, but fatigue is a constant enemy. So yeah, there's our first suit of Ankeg plate. Turns out to be a friggin' freebie. I'm gonna put that on Vicky and get rid of that splint mail, because... Yeah, Splint negates Jahira's Druid spell, so she can't wear it. Definitely not usable by thieves. And my others already have plate mail. There you go. Viconia just got a lot better off. Good for her.
My main character is level one. This is Dungeons and Dragons, PD. Leveling happens slow. But when you do level up, it's extremely significant. All right. With that, for now, we'll backtrack up north. The other... Uh, so, th there are... I, I was being a little blasé. There are lots of reasons my main character is still level one in both classes. First of all, when you're multi-class, all the experience points you get are divided evenly between your two classes. They don't both increment at the same time. The second thing is I got a party of six people really, really fast. So every time my party gates experience, First, it's divided by six among my six party members. Then it's divided by two among both of my main characters' classes. So my progression in each of my two classes is one-twelfth of my total experience. So it's going to be slow. That being said, we're going to have absolutely no trouble hitting the level cap. It'll happen in chapter three or four. It, always, it always, almost always does. All right. Here's the Nashkilin. Here's Rasad. Let's temporarily boot Imowen. Just so we can loot Rasad. Huh, you're a queer fellow. See? Such feats are easy when you learn to focus their energies through the light of Selune. Karis, hey, how are you, buddy? What exactly are you doing here, there? Are you some sort of circus performer? I bet you can't do that while juggling an axe, a soup bowl, and a hedgehog. <laughs> Perhaps not yet. But as I continue to improve my physical and mental skills by turning my inner light outward, I may yet perform such feats. My name is Rasad, and I am a humble monk of the Sun Soul. Rasad is a shitty companion for one very simple reason. Monks can be very, very good or very, very bad, and it all depends on their ability scores. Rasad has shitty ability scores, so he's a terrible companion to actually use in combat, I mean. May I tell you more about the Order of the Sun Soul? Please do. Look, if you're just asking for money, here's the gold. Don't spend it all in one place. No, I don't have time for this. Please do. The Order of the Sun Soul was founded during the time of... Hey, what are you supposed to be then? Some sort of kick puncher? Come on, take a poke at me. I dare you. I have come not to fight, but to demonstrate a few... Oh, so that's how it is, eh? You prance about, pretending to be some sort of hard man, but you're just a coward, right? <laughs> I am not afraid to defend myself, but I do not seek out conflict without purpose. Instead, I wish to share the light of the Moon Maiden. Um, no, the level cap is a bit lower for multi classes because it's actually an experience cap. I... I think the exact number is 165,000 for Baldur's Gate 1 with Tales of the Sword Coast. I'm not quite sure about that, but... The, uh... It actually might be, it might even be a little, it's definitely not level 9 in both classes. I think it's, uh, mages level slower than fighters. I think it's level 8 fighter, level 7 mage. Not quite positive about that, but I think that's how it shakes out. Oh, I get it. You're some kind of simpering priest, just pretending you knows how to fight, but really just begging for coins, yeah? A Sun Soul monk uses mind, body, and spirit in equal portions, but not to prove his martial superiority. 
Rather, he seeks to better the lives of those around him. I like this commoner. He's speaking my language. Yeah, yeah. Save it for temple school, boy. If you're not gonna fight nobody, I won't waste any more time on you. Good for you, Rasad. I admire a man who stands up for his principles even in the face of ignorance. I guess enlightenment doesn't bring in as many coins as a good fist fight, eh, Rasad? Are you gonna take that from him, Baldy, or you all talk? <laughs> I'm gonna go with option two. Number three is a little too asshole for me. No, you are correct. Many people find excitement only in physical action. To find true enlightenment, one must combine the physical with the mental and the spiritual. Uh, Baldur's Gate 1 is not exactly a short game. Like I said, uh, it's uh, Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 before Throw the Ball. Throw the Ball started playing with things a little more, but Baldur's Gate 1 and 2, to this day probably, are the closest things to being literal translations of Dungeons and Dragons in a video game form, and D&D, leveling up is just slow. It takes a long, long time. But that's also what's kind of so great about it, because every single level up makes you a shit ton stronger in a way that just isn't true in probably any other RPG format. You seem like someone who would appreciate the tenets of my order. May I tell you more about Salune and the Sansor monks? Tell me why you worship Salune. Tell me more about the Order of the Sun Soul. Actually, I want you to join me. Not now. Farewell. Tell me why you worship Salune. Of the inheritors of Amonitor's power, Salune is the most ardent foe of spiritual darkness. After all, she is the bright opposite of Shah, the mistress of the night. No worry, Karis. It's all good. The Moon Maiden's reflected radiance inspires us to shine our inner light upon those in need. In the face of lies, we offer truth. In the face of hatred, we offer compassion. That sounds like a good philosophy. You don't go door to door with this stuff, I hope. As long as your beliefs don't interfere with my quest, you can believe what you like. I'll go with option one. What more would you like to know? Tell me more about the Order of the Sun Soul. The Order of the Sun Soul was founded in the days of ancient Netherim. Then it was called the Brotherhood of the Sun, and its members dedicated themselves to the Sun God, Amonitor. With the fall of Netherim, Amonitor vanished. Some believe his power now resides in other gods. Different factions of my order turn to them. Most to Lathander, some to Selune, and a very few to Sunu. My sect of the order reveres Sulune, the Moon Maiden. The Milk Maiden is a more appropriate name for Shar's anemic sister. I beg to differ, lady. Since you are drow, I can understand why you cling to the shadows. Yet perhaps you can still find your way into the light. What, what is the other, what's the other question, PD? I'm sorry, I'm looking at, I'm looking at chat, and I felt like I gave a very thorough answer to why I'm level one. Is the whole game voice acted? No. Um, a hefty portion, like, more than, uh, certainly more of it than, say, Morrowind. The whole game isn't voice acted, but there's a lot of voice acting in it, so. Or perhaps I shall do you the favor of introducing you to the cool, comforting whispers of the Mistress of the Night. I do not think we shall soon agree on this point, but I welcome your efforts to test my faith. You will find it strong. What more would you like to know? Actually, I want to ask you to join me. I have had trouble making ends meet since coming to Nashville. If doing so gives me the chance to help others find their inner light, I would be glad to join you. Fair enough, Petey. Backed. A lot of it is, but not all of it. 
Yeah, Lone Wonder, that's a pretty good answer. Look, Boo! This one also fights without weapons. You must teach him some of your special moves. <laughs> Journal updated, the Sun Soul Monk. Interesting choice. We shall see how long it takes for this moon worshipper to embrace the darkness. I shall help him find it. I'm not sure if she's talking about fucking him or making him evil. Maybe both. <laughs> Journal updated. The Sun Soul Monk and Rasad get the level up. All right. I met a Sun Soul Monk named Rasad. At first, I might have mistaken him for a performer from the nearby circus. But he explained that he is devoted to the goddess Selune, the moon maiden. He and his brother Gamaz grew up on the streets of Kalimford until the monks took them in. An air of calm sadness surrounds Rasad. But his martial arts skills may come in handy during my journey. I invited him to join me. Alright, so let's eyeball Rasad. He has almost an empty inventory, but not quite. He's got Moonlight Walker boots. These comfortable boots provide monks of, excuse me, provide monks of the Sun Soul with exceptional arch support, allowing them to perform feats that would lead to crippling back pain in ordinary people. Usable only by Rasad. There's no real point in stripping them off of him, but I will anyway, just sell them off because I'm spiteful like that. How big is the D&D lore? Oh, fuck. <laughs> I, I, I don't mean to cackle like that. D&D uh, &D was invented in the 1960s and lore has been growing for half a century. It's huge. It's... 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 I'm, it, it, it's bigger than anything else I can think of. It's bigger than Elder Scrolls. It's bigger than Final Fantasy. It's bigger than Kingdom Hearts. It's bigger than Star Wars. It's bigger than Star Trek. It's huge. Not as big as Lord of the Rings. I'll, I'll say that, too. Alright, well... He's a lawful good Sun Soul Monk, and he's ready to level up. Let's go ahead and level him up so he doesn't suck. Anybody who can find traps, we want all that nonsense. I'm, why am I saying nonsense? Let's look at his bio. When asked about his past, Rasad speaks sorrowfully about losing his brother Gabaz to the Shadow Thieves of Eskatla. Both Rasad and Gamaz grew up in the Monastery of the Moon in Kalimshan after a Sun Soul monk rescued them from the streets of Kalimhort. There the young boys had barely eked out a living as pickpockets after their father died in the Arena of Freedom, where he had been consigned for his debts. Despite the tragedy of his upbringing, Rasad seems to have found peace in his order's teachings and their worship of Selune, the Moon Maiden. So Rasad is an unarmed fighter. What are the most important stats for an unarmed fighter? Well, they would be dexterity, constitution, and strength. And they're just not good. All right. I am prepared. I'm kidding, I'm not going to take his character-specific boots off of him just for gold. Because, and I have a good reason for that, too. The, um, we actually have to, at some point, and I'm not sure who I will boot to do it, but at some point we have to spend significant amounts of time adventuring with the three expansion, not expansion, the three enhanced edition characters just to unlock their quest. So, we're going to want him to be as functional as he can be when we do that. So we'll leave him with his boots. 
My honor is my life. All right, the commoners have dispersed. Now we're gonna boot a er, we're gonna boot Rasad and get him on back. I look forward to your inst as the full moon wanes and disappears. So too does our association come to an end. I pray that it will one day wax again, and we should travel the realms side by side. I shall return to Nashkel. If you ever wish to learn more about the Sun Soul, please do not hesitate to come speak with me. All right, and he hangs out right where we found him. As you will. What you want? Get him on back. Paris. Well, she's named. I feel like I should go ahead and talk to her. Oh, you haven't seen a man about him. This tall and oh, this wide, have you? That lout. I'm sorry, I can't help you. Oh, you haven't seen a man about him. This tall and oh, this wide, have you? That lout. All right, let's head into the Nashkill Inn. It may be a touch unladylike, but I'm gonna slit your throat, I am. Nira. Just fancy my luck seeing you stroll in here bold as day. I expected a hunt and a chase from the description, but who am I to argue easy coins in the purse? May the Lord of Shadows guide you swiftly to your death. I would first know my attacker, why are you doing this? I will defend myself if I must. If you wish to die, then attack as you will. Is there no compassion in your heart? Will you not reconsider? If money be your motivation, surely we can make a deal. Let's go with option one. I would first know my attacker. Why are you doing this? Who I am is unimportant, though my name is Nira. What I am is a hunter of bounties, and on your head is a lovely little sum. Does this satisfy your request? I thought it wouldn't. No matter. Yep. Helm, give me strength. Get ready, yeah. Squat Waffle. Person, that's not good. What I'm hoping to avoid. There you go. Wrecked oh, by magic missile, huh, Cuntosaurus? Well, of course. <laughs> yeah. With mail. Medium shield, a club, helmet, and a letter. I'm not entirely sure what the fuck I'm looking at, but... Helm of Eden for Vision, the Eyes of Truth. Being a scavenger of a sort, Babette Maelstrom had this helm created to aid her in her dungeon excursion. She would later attribute her gathered wealth solely to its power, but likely it was as much her keen eyes as anything. So, it's a helmet that gives in for vision. We're going to put it on the Jantus as soon as we can. In the meantime, let's 
Let's try giving Vicky that medium shield. I think she can use it after all. Inadequate strength. Oh. JK. Alright, nobody else is even going to use shield, so let's just unpause and wait for the hole to wear off. I need some air. Never bothered taking the letter. My bad. Bounty notice. So remember the first time we found a bounty on our head, when we looted Tarnash at the Friendly Arm Inn, the bounty was 350. Be it known to all those of evil intent that a bounty has been placed upon the head of Travis, the foster child of Gorion. Last seen in the region of Baragos, this person is to be killed in quick order. The subject is to be considered a formidable foe, and is likely to have a well-equipped traveling companion. This offer has been extended to all appropriate guilds. Those returning with proof of the deed shall receive no less than 680 coins of gold. So they've very nearly doubled the bounty. As always, any that reveal these plans to so the forces of law shall join the target in their fate. Mm -hmm. Everybody good? All right. By hell! What's yeah. up, innkeeper? Never had rats. No sorry. You should do yourself a favor and stay indoors tonight. I've heard of all sorts of weird things happening at night. What can you give me today? I don't need anything at the moment. Option one. Rumor rumors. We never need rumors. Because I cheat. My honor is my life. And I know where all the quests yeah. live. Lock. I care not. Hey Moen, can you pick that I've lock, done baby doll? Enough of this. There we go. Seven gold. Oh, Lord. What a reward. Suddenly success. Five gold. Yay. Dilly dilly. Nine gold. Huzzah! I was trying to find appropriate cheers for minor amounts of gold. Like we keep finding. Damn. Helm, give me strength. Got it all. All right, let's bail. Yeah. Although, with Helm's blessing. Just kidding. Let's do a rest, cause as you will. This course we take is beyond Never all tenets of rest. decency. No sorry. I want. Pro tag to rememorize identify and of course 
It's always a little more convenient if it's daytime. All right. As you will. All right, let's clear some fog of war because we've barely seen any of Nashkel. The next thing I really legitimately want to do is enter the Nashkel store, but first I feel like it's a good idea just to clear the fog in this ginormous area behind all the buildings. Thought I already... No, I didn't. Whoops. The eyes of truth! Whoop the ass of a normal helmet. Thanks, Carefree. I... I... Honest to God, thought I already had. <laughs> so thank you for the reminder. Oh, Lord. My brain is failing. I'm getting old! Manor House. Very interesting. We'll be here later. I assure you we will be. In the interim. Go back yon direction and clear some more fog. Don't think I've hit the east of Nashville yet. Doesn't matter, it would either be the carnival or the wilderness. Pack. As you will. That was a bit silly of me. It's alright though. Deep water here. Yes, Poo, I agree. This group could do with a swift kick in the morals. Settle down, men. We're eventually gonna be a ref 18. As high as we can go without Viconia leaving. Ooh! <laughs> Probably not. Like, I'm going to show it. I'm probably not going to bother trying really hard to win it. Because winning that fight has, like, no reward. Like, the Phoenix Guards don't even give you good experience, right? But I'm, I'm going to show that what I would call an Easter egg. make folks aware of it, but in terms of working really hard to actually survive the fight, no. No. Not even a little. Alright. Beggar. Generic. Commoner. Generic. Just two boys. Don't care. Y'all gotta have names or give quests for me to care enough. Ooh, 
Ublak. Deal with him later. The Garrison. You can see Ublak is the only one with a name. I am going to speak to him, but just later. There's Baron Guest Kill. Near a commoner. Temple of Helm. I mean, Easter egg is probably the wrong word. Except it's... Like, it's not like it references anything else. It's just a, uh... It's an exceedingly difficult fight that doesn't really serve any other purpose. Nashkill Store. Alright, let's head in there. We got a little more fog to clear out, but we'll be fine. All right. With Helm's blessing. There's nothing here. Literally nothing. No containers to search. Let's chat with the Welcome to my humble establishment. Interested in a little business on the side, friend? I have a man who swears by his grandmother he glimpsed a white wolf up in the Cloud Peak ice field. It was but a short way south, and she'd be easy pickings for a smart sword. I'd pay you good money for its pelt. So it's a guaranteed sale if you go. Keep it in mind on your travels. Can I interest you with anything here in my humble shop? Yes, what do you have for sale? Nothing right now. What do you have for sale, my boy? Pearl, splint mail, helmet, yes. Sell all that. Splint mail, medium shield, leather. Guess we'll just have to ground the club. All right, let's look through what he sells, see if there's anything new. Ninjato. I think this is actually new. The sword of the ninja, the Ninjato, is of lower quality than other Karaturan blades, such as the katana. The ninja toe is short with a straight blade, making it ideal for subterfuge. The ninja toe is also more suited to fighting in closed places, sometimes giving the ninja an advantage over the longer blades that the samurai use. Okay. I also think this is my first heavy crossbow. The flavor text is no different at all. Huh. This dude used to have large shields plus one for sale, but he doesn't anymore. Yes, in Nashkill, I found a merchant eager to buy winter wolf pelt. Minsk already has a composite longbow plus one, actually. All right, let's go ahead and leave the store. He's got nothing I actually want. Like, literally nothing, which is kind of crazy, but he doesn't. All right, let me show you something. The thing he, um, Carefree was talking about. 
the reason I'm not going to do it is there's no reward for managing to win, but look at these tombstones. We can read almost all of them. The reports of my death have been greatly underestimated, James. Ben's last words, I regret nothing. Chris Parker, 1 Kai Thorn, 1347. He never returned from his last journey up north. Here lies Greg. Reader of cash, thou art in want of any. Dig four feet deep, and thou wilt find a penny. Forever to be remembered, Marcia. Bestie sumus ut non bestie samus. Beasts we are, lest we beasts become. Here lies Dan M. When I can no longer stand alone, then it will be time to die. Here lies the body of Rob. If not, please notify the undertakers at once. This is the final resting place of Russ. Everyone dies. It's how you live that matters. Charles. One note too many, one day too late. Here lies Gillis. Use no net, knew no fear, made misstep, wound up here. Here lies Andrew. The quality of his armor was not assured. Here lies John W. Looked up the mine shaft to see if the cart was on the way down. It was. <laughs> A bard of sorts with skill and rhyme and reason made the words come clear. He gladly wrote for all to hear, and therein lies the rub, my friends. He said his starts too far from end, so less is more go unread. A lesson learned. Too bad I'm dead. Lucas K. Okay, we read those, so. Here lies Rick, who was always a few links shy of a chain. Mike, I feel my body rising towards the bright light. Wait, now it's falling. What the hell? Ross, the long-haired hippie agitator, dead. But he was so young and beautiful. Ioin O. Galchaber, may a gloria fade. Beneath this stone, a lump of clay, lies Mark D. the Young, who on the 23rd of May began to hold his tongue. Here lies Cass, Moore's Principium Est, death is the beginning. Larry's last words, let's split up, we'll cover more ground. Here lies Tobin, who believed in the good of all, died at the hands of zombies, whilst asking for directions. Here lies Kelly, an atheist, all dressed up and no place to go. There once was a man named John who fell asleep out on his lawn. They thought he was pretending to be dead. Then a tombstone fell on his head, and now Dawn is long gone. Here lies Arno. You should see the other guy. I was Nashkill born and Nashkill bred, and here I lay, Nashkill dead, Dave H. Fergus who said, is it done yet? Not yet, I bet. Once too many. Here lies Scott. Sleep? I don't need no stinking sleep. Dave F. slain by 13 gibberlings, 4 kobolds, 6 ogres, and 2 dire wolves. Me in voces expellere non posis. Do not call up that you cannot put down. Dean, the lean, mean, killing machine, died. We're basically dealing with um, Black Isle's quote scroll as we go through these tombstones. The wizard, like, I can't tell you exactly. He drops nothing worth anything if you manage to kill him. Dan W., he died at a public gathering when the platform gave away. When they said animate the dead, poor Tony took it literally. Poor Steve, when we said heads up, old friend, we meant it. Here lies Henrik, who was fatally burned, 13 Mertul, 1358, by the explosion of a lamp filled with P.J. Stanford's non-explosive burning fluid. This is the final resting place of Elben, who lost his life to an ant keg, eaten but never forgotten. Stranger, tread this ground with gravity. Dentist. Mark B is filling his last cavity. 
I forget which grave it even is. It's this one. Mark D. Just keep bothering this grave and somebody should eventually spawn. Darog! Never do that again or my wrath will be great indeed. Ah, you fools, you really shouldn't have disturbed my grave site. It was not easy faking my own death, and I'll not have it ruined by your meddling. Face ye your own death and the hell flames that go with it. We called four Phoenix Guards. Now, the problem with Phoenix Guards is they do a fireball level explosion when we kill them. Yeah, and they, like, murder the fuck out of all of us. So we're not gonna do As that. As you will. All right. Let's head into the Temple of Helm next. Yeah, that was fast, wasn't it? Yeah, it's the Phoenix Guards are bad news bears. All right, in we go. If I can find the right spot to click, there we go. Oh, goody. With Helm's blessing. Nalen. Chat with him. Ah, intrepid adventurers at our door. Helm guards over all the realms, and his servants are at your disposal. The vigilant one stands ready to mend thy ailment and so divert the unyielding gaze of the great guide. For a suitable donation, of course, just to demonstrate our mutual goodwill, you understand. Helm, watch over you and our poor lost brother, Brage. A finer captain of the guard could nearly be found this side of Am. Such a strange change for one so devout as he. One does not usually change so drastically without nefarious help. If there be an evil influence on him, Perhaps the harsh justice of the military should be stayed. He'll find no quarter at the garrison, but if he came to the temple, well, his restitution need not be his life. Is there anything I can help you with? Yes, what kind of services do you provide? We can donate, get healed. Sell and or buy shit. I'm going to drop that club and give Imowen's scroll case back. Nalen at the Temple of Helm in Nashkill seems to think that Brage might be under the influence of some evil force. If I return Brage to the temple, he might not be killed for his crimes. Interesting. All right, well, give Imowen's scroll case back, you dummy. Ground the club, like a quarter staff and basic arrows. 
nobody's going to pay us even a single gold piece for it. Lost Alex, hello. I would like to say we're all doing well. I can only speak for myself. It's a pretty good Tuesday. How are you, my friend? All right, let's head to the garrison. As you will. Eight months of subscription. We're a month away from our sub baby, buddy. Thank you so much. I can't even stand away, citizen. Can't even begin to tell you how much I appreciate it. Hey there! Who told you that you could come in here? This place is only for members of the Omnian soldiery. Little snot noses like you, you're not welcome here. Come on, get out of here before I have to kick your butt. Hey, I'm sorry. I didn't. We didn't know that this was the barracks. We'll get out right now, okay? Or, who the hell do you think you are trying to push around? I don't think you know who you're dealing with. Shut up and get lost before we have to hurt you. Ah, uh, sorry about yelling at you. I didn't mean nothing from it. I'll just be going now, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so... You kinda gotta think about what you want. Because any chest we open, they're gonna call the guards. There's one chest... So let's look through the chest that we can get to and see what we find. How's that sound? As you will. Locked. Imowen? <laughs> You're a queer fellow. Do your job. I've done had enough of this. All right. My honor is my life. As you will. A short sword. Stand away, citizen! Some gold. Plus one. This short blade is magical, improving accuracy and damage. I already feel like that's the piece of loot I actually want. Give it to Imowen so she has an unbreakable weapon. But, let's check the other chests first. As you will. Huh, you're a queer fellow. This way. Cool one, son. Can you force it, Minsk? Full plate and packing steel. You're a queer fellow. Can you open this one, M-O-N? I've done had enough of this. Cool Mint one can song. open it. Butt kicking for goodness! <laughs> All right. This one. 
That's a whopping 10 gold. And taking Stricky or, or, wheel gets the kick. Opening it summons the guard. My honor is my life. Ain't life grand. With Helm's blessing. Let's look at the back room. There's nothing there. There are three other chests. All right. Adro. Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us stream live. I really appreciate it, my friend. And Tater, I will have fun butt kicking for goodness. Tater. Before you actually leave, consider send me a DM later. Do you want to go to Toronto so we can, in fact, drink together? Sounds like the greatest thing ever. I know it depends on your drill schedule, but just let me know if it can happen, because I don't really want to go unless <laughs> you're going to be there. You're a clear fellow. But if you're going to be I'm there, gone. I have to be there. Know what I mean? Yeah, you do. Alright, Minsk, can Who you open that one? Some? Butt kicking for goodness! How do you not have a passport? So, I... Helm, Might have been give a me little strength! More ash, assholish than I intended. But... Yeah! Get a fucking passport, bro. What you want? It's a very useful thing to have. This way. All right. Night, bro. We'll see you later. Oh shit! She unlocked it. Alright, let's look at the one she unlocked first. Gold and a basic bitch dagger. Who wants some? Full plate and packing steel. We have successfully forced this lock. My honor is my life. Yeah! Gold and a potion of agility. Okay. The thing I want is the short sword plus one. My honor is my life. With I think that's for this. I think that's literally this very first chest. I don't want to murder a bunch of soldiers and tank my rep, so we will simply. Get the sword identified. Get it equipped on Dear Darling Imowen. In lieu of the infinitely shittier basic short sword, now we have three out of six characters using unbreakable weapons. We're getting there. It just takes time. Oof. Alrighty, fam. It's time to actually chat with Ooblack. We've been eyeballing this mofo. As you will. Let's speak to him. Oh, you have returned, and so soon. No, say not another word. I would not think of making you wait but a moment for your just reward. 
When Council told me that they had procured Grey Wolf to rid the woods of the bandit Tonquin, I knew we could expect swift justice. I would not have predicted success this quickly, but who else could it be striding into town, uh, looking as you do? Please accept this meager sum of 200 gold pieces, as well as the heartfelt thanks of all of Nashkel. Uh, yes, yes, I would be Grey Wolf, that's me, all right, none other than Grey Wolf. I'll take that reward because of what I did. I'm Grey Wolf and I deserve it. Thank you. You must have made some mistake. I am not this Grey Wolf. Keep your money. It's not mine to take. This will boost our reputation from 7 to 8, if we're honest. And that is, ultimately, the more valuable reward, so let's do it. You are not Grey Wolf the Bounty Hunter? Oh, sweet helm, I almost gave 200 gold pieces to a complete stranger. The captain best not hear of this, he'd have my hide. Thanks be for your honesty, stranger. There are those who would not have done as such. Yes, Carefree, I can't open that chest yet. I have to go back after I have access to knock. A man in Nashville named Ublek mistook me for a bounty hunter named Grey Wolf. I cost myself a little gold, but prevented him from making an expensive mistake. Only good things can come of it. Camaraderie, adventure, and steel on steel. The stuff of legend, right, Boo? Our reputation is up to eight. It's good. All right. Let's focus back on clearing fog. We're going to meet Edwin, who is one of my favorite NPCs. We follow the righteous path, the path of hell. It's just that I surface all, dwellers can be so I stupid. Almost never do evil plays, but Edwin is such an amazing mage. There he is, Edwin. Let's chat with this boyo, and let's. Preemptively boot him in. We'll pick uh, her back you're up. You're a queer fellow. Go no further. I require the services of your group. Yes, they will do nicely. I am the wizard Edwin, and I require you. Yes. They will do nicely. I would have you kill the witch, the witch Dinah here. She is treacherous, but with your participation, I foresee no difficulty. Will you assist? One, a witch, you say? Oh, right, she's dead. Two, I'll have nothing to do with your murderous plans. Three, why would you have this woman dead? Am I the killer without knowing? Four, I would know the price you offer before I take the job. Let's go with three. Why does he want to kill Dinah here? Spoiler, she's already dead. Frankly, yes. It is no concern of yours. You need but perform the acts with no questions. What is your answer? I would know the price you offer. The prize I offer would surely be beyond measure in your meager understanding. 
Either take the job or not. All right. She's dead. Option one. She is dead. It is as it should be. Rashomar fools tramping about the realms. Did they expect to escape the Eye of Thay? All that is to be determined is what they were doing here. You, Travis, I would travel with you until I know what she was up to. Do you agree? You may join, though I wish no conflict amidst my group. I'll not risk having you with me. It is hard enough keeping out of trouble without inviting it. Option one. Fuck you doing that, Oh, he's casting armor on himself. Okay, that's fine. He has a quarter staff and Edwin's amulet. Usable by Edwin. This is Edwin's birthright inlaid with his family stone. Alright, well. We're at eight. So he didn't affect our reputation. Let's read his bio. When asked about his past, Edwin sneers that he has no intention of revealing such information and that it is none of your business. He further states that you are lucky enough to simply share his company and then mutters something about leaving whenever he wishes. He obviously cares little for the camaraderie of others and seems to take more pleasure in speaking to himself than in interacting with the party. His attire brazenly displays the colors of the Red Wizards of Thay, the why a member of that organization would come, would come so far west is puzzling. Edwin does not seem forthcoming with any information. All right. We're going to use you for a while in BG2, but you're gone for now, Edwin. Again you disturb me. You would have me leave the group? I agree to do so, but only as it serves my purposes for the time being. I will wait here, but I am not a patient man. Come back here, Bowen. We what need you, you darling. Alrighty. Tips home. Okay, hold on. No stream Friday, but I will be streaming Saturday, like I more usually do. Yes, long stream on Saturday. As usual, we're, the, the cabin trip just got cancelled, so we're utterly, totally back on a normal schedule hey, yeah. for Saturday. Well, we've aggroed Nuber. It's a mistake, but let's deal with him. Hi, I'm Nuber. Nice place, huh? Hey, yeah. So, killed any monsters yet? Hey, yeah. Ever been to Baldur's Gate? I've been to Baldur's Gate. Hey, yeah. Ugh, I think I stepped in something. Hey, yeah. Everyone in town used to throw rocks at me and tell me I was annoying. Hey, yeah. What time is it? Hey, yeah. I haven't had a conversation this long, well, ever. Hey, yeah. What's that big weapon for? Hey, yeah. Those colors look pretty stupid on you. Hey, yeah. I once knew this guy named Dilby. He threw rocks at me, too. Are you going to throw rocks at me? What about now? Hey, yeah. What about now? Hey, yeah. What about now? Hey, yeah. What about now? Hey ya. What about now? Hey ya. What about now? Hey ya. 
What about now? Hey ya. What about now? Hey ya. What hey about ya. now? What about now? What about now? Hey ya. 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 Gee, you sure are patient. I've run out of things to say. Hi, Tiff. And the party gains 400 experience. For letting Nuber rant yammer. I mean, I... If it were up to me, I'd throw some fucking rocks at him. But experience points are our friends. Carp! Who are you, girlfriend? What's your tale? I wish things were better here on the farm, but at least we're not miners. How could anything be better than this pristine pastoral setting? What's the difference? Either way, you spend all your life with your hands in the dirt. Let's compliment her farm. Option one. I we could have a crop for starters. See those crusted mounds of earth? They're all left over from last year's harvest. The sun's baked to them firm and hard, and the plow breaks at the very thought of trying to turn that tortured soil. My son tried pushing the new seeds in between the cracks, but I doubt anything will come of it. Come this time next year, we'll all be living in the endless slums of Ethcatla. So yes, I wish things were better in this here pristine and pastoral setting. Well, I mean, there needs to be a cunt. Just a basic-ass commoner. Here in the very southwest corner of the map, because of reasons. Cows, a farmer. Alright, just an FYI, tip getting home means we're going to end the stream when we finish exploring Nashkel. But well, that's gonna be like a 90 minute stream anyway, so. I feel like you guys are probably fine. Alright. All the fog's gone. Let's head over to the Belching Dragon. Time to go inside. You will. Volo is in here. I need some ale. Volo and truly a bunch of generics. Let's talk to the bartender. I got some cheap beer for ya. Volo's blasted review cut my business in half. I'll take him for a chat out back when next I see him. So would you like a drink? Yes or no? Say yes. All we have are the rumors. Now, let's talk I need some to Volo. He is a significant personage in the Forgotten Realms D&D setting. Uh, yes, the, uh, a tab. Um... Now, another ale, young miss. I'll be sure to have your funds ready. Mm -hmm. Greetings, fellow traveler, for I see by your garb that you do not call this place home. Sit with me a while and enjoy the atmosphere of this fine fair, while we recount tales of lands far and far seeming. I have wandered the width and breadth of Faerun, but yet have I to find such hospitality as that of a, 
as that of a simple country festival. It's a shame that the festivities are marred by the events as of recent, though they certainly put up a brave face, do they not? You look confused, so perhaps you know not of the local trouble that continues to vex the most gracious people of Nashkel. If you have just arrived, I could, for the price of an ale and an ear, relate what I know. Shall I tell you of their mining difficulties, or relate the tale of their unfortunate commander of the guard? My companions and I have an interest in the mines. Tell me what you know. The word is that all across the expanse of Sword Coast, from the Cloud Peaks to Baldur's Gate, an ore shortage is severely crippling local trade. Bandits, purportedly both human and demi-human, raid caravans whilst ore reaching its destination becomes brittle and useless following smelting, strangely afflicted by an odd iron-weakening plague. As though this were not cause for alarm in itself, production at the mines outside of Nashkel has fallen, with a substantially lower yields being blamed on nervous workers. Mysterious disappearances of several miners have set the whole area on edge, where something must shift the balance to one side or the other. 1. Would you consent to another tale? I also have an interest in the story of the Captain of the Guard. 2. I have heard as much from common rumors about the street outside. Your tale is but a long-winded version. 3. An interesting story to be sure. Well met, Volo, and good luck on your journeys. Option 1. Just let me finish my drink, and then we can carry on through the wee hours with our tales. Rumor from Volo. The word is that all across the expanse of Sword Coast, from Cloud Peaks to Baldur's Gate, an ore shortage is severely crippling local trade. Troubles in the region, rumors, and happenings. Bandits, purportedly both human and demi-human, raid caravans will soar reaching its destination. Comes brittle and useless following smelting, strangely afflicted by an odd iron-weakening plague. As though this were not cause for alarm in itself, production of the mines outside of Nashkill has fallen, with the substantially lower yields being blamed on nervous workers. Mysterious disappearances of several miners have set the whole area on edge, where something must shift the balance to one side or the other. All right. Bobo. It's surprising what one can learn at a simple country fair, hmm? Well, hello again, my inquisitive friend. I trust you're enjoying the local color. I wonder, have you come to hear more about my journeys? The story about the captain of the guard sounds compelling. Might I hear it? If you would relate what troubles have been plaguing the mines, I would appreciate it. I have not time for your fanciful stories. Leave me be. Captain of the Guard, option one. I hear that Commander Brage of the Omnian Guard has been missing for some weeks now, following a strange alteration in his behavior. Where once he was a well-thought-of family man, he has turned to senseless mayhem, affecting a rampage the likes of which I have never heard. His fellow soldiers noted nothing out of sorts that could trigger such a transformation. But one notable item seems relevant. If not for the iron shortage, it would have gone unnoticed. But, prior to his mad rage, the commander procured a new sword. The importance of this information I have no way of verifying. I'm afraid that, although I have enjoyed our chat immensely, and it has heartened me to see the wandering spirit is still venerated, I must take my leave. I need some time to myself for reflection upon everything I have learned while here in Nashkel. The Tale of Captain Brage, Rumor from Volo. I hear that Commander Brage of the Omnian Guard has been missing for some weeks now following a strange alteration in his behavior. Where once he was a well thought of family man, he turned to senseless mayhem, affecting a rampage, the likes of which I have never heard. His fellow soldiers noted nothing out of sorts that could trigger such a transformation, but one notable item seems relevant. If not for the iron shortage, it would have gone unnoticed, but prior to his mad rage, the commander procured a new sword. The importance of this information I have no way of verifying. All right, Volo. I've traveled the length and breadth of Farron, and there's always something new. 
I don't have any more stories for you at this moment. Perhaps if you come back later, I'll have more tales to tell. Bobo is not powerful at all. He's only level 5. Which makes him a lot stronger than any of my people, to be fair, but... Now, Volo's level 5. He's just a source of information. The significance of him is Volo, also known as Volo Thamp Gidarm. He's listed as the author of so many lore texts, and that actually includes the manual that shipped with the OG 1998 Baldur's Gate game. Alright. I want to finish Nashkel with Helm's Blessing before I end the stream. And we're close. Oh, and class, I think he's a bard, but I don't know Volo's class. Locked! Immoen, get in here. Solve the problem. I said yep. Immoen. Get this in way. here and solve the problem. There we go. Helm, give me str- Yeah! Dilly dilly. Sleeping woman, commoner to chest. With Helm's blessing. I care not. I've done had enough of this. Can you open Cold it now? One, sir. Full plate and packing steel. You cannot. <laughs> You're a queer fellow. I'm gone. Doesn't actually matter. There's nothing significant in here. It's all miter loot. You point, I punch. Butt kicking for goodness! Oh, got it open. All right. Before we do that... Wait, what? No, 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 no. By Helm! I misclicked a button. With Helm's blessing. Talk to the commoner, bro. Hello there. Hello. Could you please be very quiet? My mother is asleep and I don't wish to wake her. What is it that you need? We don't need anything. Sorry for bothering you. We want all of your money. Give it to us or die. Do you, uh, have any information on the mines? Let's go with option three. All I know about the mines is that men keep on disappearing in their hellish depths. My husband is one of the miners, but he hasn't been home for weeks. One. Maybe we... Er, two thanks. One. Maybe we could help you. We're thinking of exploring the mines. Describe your husband for us. Maybe we'll see him. Go with that one. He's got black hair, blue eyes. Oh, damn, you'll never find him from that description. His name is Joseph, and he wears his wedding ring on his left hand. It's a green stone ring. Joseph's wife. We told a young woman in Nashville that we'd try to find her husband who has disappeared in the city's adjoining mines. His name is Joseph, oops. And he wears a green stone ring. Oh. My honor is my life. Hello there. Stay 
Stand away, citizen! Alright. That's just gold and the basic battle axe. And we have to come back here to With trigger Helm's the quest. Blessing. Let's not do that. Time for the manor house. Let's go there. With Helm's blessing. I'm going to take a very brief restroom break while my party walks to the manor house. Be right back. Thank you, thank you. Sorry for the gap. Let's head inside. Manor house. Uh oh. All right. You're a queer fellow. I'm job. gone. My honor is my life. Here we yeah. go. Noble yeah. woman. No time to chit chat. No time to chit chat. Noble man. My dear, common riffraff running about my house. Perhaps all of you could be so kind as to leave at once. I'm off on important business, and I really can't have strangers stomping about my home. When I get back, please make sure that you're gone. Alright, that's locked. Can Imowen open what it? What you want? Let's this way. One. And miss cool it. Squeaky wheel gets the kick. He can. There's gold here, but stand away, citizen. It comes with the price of spawning in hostile. My honor is my life. Which I would rather not do. As you will. Let's look through the bookshelves.
chosen mistra we've read the bell in the depths i think that's a new one one of the great and mysterious sites in the Moonsea area, the Bell in the Depths, is connected with legendary North Keep, an island kingdom that was the first great citadel of humankind in these cold lands. North Keep was a great and magical city, and it was under the protection of these magics that humanity first began to press back the orc hordes and take command of the sea. The power of North Keep made it an obvious target for orcs, giants, and other evil races. However, these creatures were not inclined towards sea actions, and North Keep seemed safe until the day when, according to legend, 40,000 inhuman mages, shamans, witch doctors, and priests of all foul races gathered on the northern shore of the Moon Sea and began to chant, bringing the vengeance of their gods down upon the human interlopers. The gods, at least some of them, came and destroyed their priests for disturbing them, but also sank North Keep beneath the waves. The upper reaches of North Keep, its slender, now broken spires, can be seen beneath the water by boats that sail nearby. This is not attempted often, however, as the region is said to be haunted by the original defenders of North Keep, seeking company in their watch over the cold lands. On fog-ridden nights, the bells of the tallest towers, despite being submerged, can be heard as far away as hills far. History of Tethir For the past 1,500 years, Tethir has had a single strong royal family ruling with absolute power. When a king died or became incapacitated, his oldest son took the throne. As the family trees of those close to power became more intertwined and complicated, there were the inevitable wars of succession and bickering over which second cousin was the true heir to the throne. Civil wars were brief, however. And once the fighting was over, the system returned to normal until the next major dispute in a few hundred years or so. The established reoccurring cycle was broken ten years ago. The current ruling family had been in power for over 350 years, so long that they had dropped their own family name centuries ago. No one even remembers it now, and simply called themselves Tethir. King Alamander IV was comfortably ruling from Castle Tethir and the country seemed happy enough, but there was a broad current of dissatisfaction among the people of Tithir. Non-humans were forbidden by law to own land, and since most rights and privileges accorded citizens were based on land ownership, they became second-class citizens as well. Things were especially bad for elves, who were driven deep into the forest of Tithir by royal armies. Alamander IV took land away from rightful owners and gave it to nobles who promised larger contributions to the royal treasury. These social and economic inequities, coupled with several harsh winters and bad harvests in a row, made the time ripe for a change. It takes more than just a couple of lousy winters to depose a king, however. It takes treachery as well. In the case of the fall of House Tethir, it took an ambitious general and an impatient royal heir. Prince Alamander grew tired of waiting for the robust Alamander IV to make room for him, so he struck a deal with General Nashram Sharbaneth, commander of the king's largest army. While Sharbaneth marched his army toward Tethir, bringing along a sizable group of angry peasants recruited with the promise of land reform, the would-be Alamander V downplayed alarming reports from the king's spies and advisors, silencing the most persistent permanently through murder or exile. By the time Charbonneth's army arrived and laid siege to Castle Tithir, it was too late for loyalists to help. As Charbonneth launched a direct assault on the castle, using the expendable peasants as shock troops, a handful of elite soldiers let in a secret entrance by the prince would eliminate key guards and open the gates. At the same time, the prince, one of the few people allowed to see the king directly, would murder his father. A fire set by the elite troops would destroy evidence of treachery. The general and the prince would emerge from the conflagration and announce a new joint government. The plan was executed perfectly, but only up to a point. Charbonneth double-crossed the prince. His men were much too efficient in setting the castle ablaze. 
and Prince Alamander, along with most of his fellow conspirators, died horribly in the fire. At about the same time, a spy planted on the general's inner staff by the equally duplicitous Alamander murdered the general and dissolved his body with a powerful acid before anyone could come to his aid. To make matters worse, everyone had underestimated the resentment the people felt for the royal family. Once Castle Tethir began to fall, there was no holding back the mob. In one night, the proudest, strongest castle in all the country was reduced to a smoking ruin. Everything of value, fine tapestries, plates and silverware, furniture, jewelry, weapons, clothes, armor, paintings, statues, and so on, was either stolen, burned, or just ripped apart and stomped into the dust. As news of the fall of the royal family spread, so did the chaos. In what is now known as the Ten Black Days of Elaint, anyone known or even suspected of blood connection to the royal family was put to the sword. This led to some darkly humorous moments, as social climbers who had bragged just a week before of being a sixth cousin twice removed of a royal aunt tried in vain to convince an angry mob that they were only kidding. <sighs> this is dark, boys. The nobles, who were the biggest supporters of the royal family, also came under attack, and some baronial keeps fell. Local leaders who had adequately distanced themselves from the Tethir family, or were popular enough, or feared or strong enough, survived. These surviving nobles became the initial players in the fight to decide the fate of Tethir. One thing was certain. Any leader or type of government that too closely resembled rule under the Tethir would not be accepted. Royalist became a dirty word in Tethir society. The power struggle continues to this day, and there is no sign of it ending any time soon. Right, well, we already got history of Tethir. Already read it. Rather, that's good. Those are all selling scrolls. History of Shadowdale 13. History of Shadowdale Morngrim's Rule. This is all so new. Since being recommended to the position by outgoing Lord Doust Solwood, Lord Morngrim M. Cathra's rule of Shadowdale has been less peaceful than he had hoped. The first battle of Shadowdale occurred in the Year of the Prince, 1357 DR, and involved the Dale Land forces routing those of Lyran the Pretender. Lyran has made repeated attempts to gain the lordship, as was intended by the former Zentish puppet Lord Jordan. While significant, this battle pales when compared to the larger battle fought on the same site between Bane-led Zental Keep forces and the Dales during the Time of Troubles, 1358-DR-0PR. When the Battle of Shadowdale is referred to without a number, it usually means the second battle. In addition, Morngrim has had to deal with a large number of skirmishes, incursions, a possible invasion from below, explosions, and other sundry disasters. Morngrim and Cheryl have one child, Scotty, who is now nine winters old. By the customs of the area, he is not considered the heir apparent, and another suitable warrior or mage may take the reins of power of the small community. Most feel that Morngrim will hold the pendant until his son has reached his maturity, then abdicate in young Scotty's favor once he takes his grown name. If this happens, it will be the first occasion of the lordship of Shadowdale passing Bro, down to I'm a family. Bro, I'm never this idle with their time. History of Shadowdale 12 Cheryl and Morngrim meet and marry. The implications of Kelvin Blackstaff Aronson choosing the last two lords of Shadowdale, Doust Solwood and Morngrim M. Cathra, were not lost on the Dale's powerful neighbor to the south, Cormier. 
An agent was sent northward to divine Morgrim's true intentions and to guarantee the Dale's continued good relationship with the throne of the Purple Dragon. The agent was a rogue named Cheryl Rowan Mantle, sent by Vanger de Haast, though all paperwork on this matter has been curiously incinerated in Suzale, so all this hearsay entail. Cheryl discovered more than she intended and fell in love with the young Morgrim. The two married and became the Lord and Lady of Shadowdale. Cheryl's loyalty is now to her husband and to the land they co-rule. This was probably not the intention of the Cormirians. Alright, let's go upstairs now. some shit actually happens. We have another basic yeah. noble woman. Huh, you're a queer fellow. This way. Cool one, saw. Squeaky wheel gets the kick. Right, we can't open that. Doesn't really matter. There's Helm, not, give me strength. Not any great loot As you here. will. History of the last march of the giants, east of the great rift. Oh, we read that already. All right, good. History of the moon sea, we've read. History of the North One, the first flowering. I think we've read this, but I'm not certain. For millennia, gold elves dwelt in Illifarn, where Waterdeep now stands in Irlan, along the river shining. From their ornate forest cities, they traded with emerging human nations like Netheril and the Lusk, and repulsed the attacks of the goblin races. Meanwhile, dwarven clans united as the nation of Delzun, named for the dwarf who forged the Union. The nation, existing primarily underground, extended from the Ice Mountains to the Nether Mountains. Silver Moon Pass was its western border and the narrow sea its eastern shore. Orcs came from north of the spine of the world, but were turned back in great slaughter by the elves. To this day, this is the homeland and stronghold for orcs and similar races. Alright. Next. History of the North 2, The Crown Wars. That I've read, I'm certain. History of the North 3, yep, we read that. For the Elven Exodus, we've read that. This is literally a carbon copy of that house in Baragoth. Although I'm not actually sure I have read all of these. Let me look at Enchantis' inventory right quick. I'm not even sure I read this. History of the North 2, The Crown Wars. Humans immigrated in bands from the Shining Sea and up to the Sword Coast. They became seafarers, striking out across the waves to the Moonshades, Mintarn, Rotham, and the Northern Islands. Elves engaged in an unceasing war against each other, with the humans and orcs taking over the resulting ruins. Perhaps the greatest calamity to befall the fair folk was the Dark Disaster, a killing met. Yeah, this is brand new. A killing magic that took the form of a dark burning cloud. It enshrouded the kingdom of Mayeratar, and when it faded away some months later, not an elf lived, nor were trees left, only an open blasted moor, the high moor. 
All was not dark for the elves, although in retreat as barbarian humans and orc hordes grew in strength, their power rose in the elven court in Navareska, remaining a stronghold to this day. They conceived a cooperation between dwarves, kindly humans, and other elves for mutual, for mutual survival against orcs, marauding humans, and tied of beasts, ogres, bugbears, trolls, goblins, gnolls, and other non-human creatures, led by the rising power of giants. Astonishingly, in at least three places, the fallen kingdoms in the cities of Silvery Moon and Mithdranor, they succeeded with Shining Grace. To the east, on the sandy shores of the calm and shining narrow sea. No, shit, I have read this one. Villages turning into another roll. My bad. Because I totally have read that one. Sidville of Many Arrows. Yes, we've read that one. We've read that one. This looks new. History of the North, the Spread of Humankind, Volume 5. The adaptable humans made use of magic they could seize or learn from the proud peoples to defeat all enemies, breaking, for a time, the power of giants and orcs. Waterdeep was founded. The last of the pure-blood elves died out, a result of continued marriages with humans. Nope. We've read that one, too. Go figure. Alright. Well, let's keep going. History of the North 6, The Might of Men. This is new. Along the coast, in what was once the elven community of Ilifarn, humanity was once again rising in power. Merchants from the south, tribesmen from the north, and seafarers from western islands had created a village around a trading post on a deep water harbor, first known as Nimor's Hold after the Uthgart chieftain whose tribe seized and fortified the ramshackle village. Nimor and his successors, known as warlords, led the men of Waterdeep, as it had become known to ship captains, in a slowly losing battle against the trolls. In a final climactic battle, the trolls breached the aging palisade and all seemed lost, until the magic of Agaron of Silvery Moon turned luck against the trolls, destroying and scattering them. Agaron, heir to the heritage and learning of Netheril, stayed in Waterdeep, and in his 112th year he again saved the city, this time from itself. In so doing, he created the Lords of Waterdeep. The city grew into the greatest in the north, possibly in all Faerun. With Waterdeep as a firm anchor, civilization forged cautiously into the wilderness. Illuskan, now Luskan, was taken from the orcs. Loudwater, Lork, Tribor, Longsaddle, Succumber, and other towns were settled by pioneers from Waterdeep, sponsored by Waterdavian merchant families. Though it's been centuries since the last Orc invasion, there's still constant strife. Barbarians harass merchants, travelers, and towns, the seas swim with Northmen pirates, and wars have marred the land in recent years. Luskan, now a fierce merchant city known to harbor and support pirates, waged a war with the island realm of Rotham over an act of piracy against one of the few legitimate Luskan merchant ships. The war raged for nearly a year, with Rotham slowly losing ground. When it appeared Luskan would finally win the naval war and land on the island itself, the Lord's Alliance entered the fray. They threatened war against Luskin if the skirmishes didn't stop immediately. Unable to fight a two-front war efficiently, Luskin canceled its invasion plans. Tension between Luskin and Ruathim are still high, and their ships are often seen taking pot shots at each other as they pass, often just a wave or two away from each other. The government of Ruathim has recently been sending adventurers into the hills of its island realm, looking for mercenaries who were killing merchants, farmers, and woodsmen. Ruathim believes Luskin still has a present on presence on the island. 
trying to win through subversion and terrorism what it could not accomplish through war. To the far north, the ten towns have finished rebuilding after being nearly destroyed by the monstrous forces of Akar Kessel. With help from the tundra barbarians living nearby, they've built and repaired their cities, replanted the sparse foliage, and most importantly, replenished the morale of their citizens. A recent trader who passed through the area carrying 17 wagons of rare oak lumber said that it was nearly impossible to determine who's a barbarian and who isn't. They're living together, he reported in amazement. Yes. Done and done. History of the North 7. Year of the Banner. We've read that. All right. I recognize the name. All right, party. By hell. Let's go to the center yeah. room. There's Samantha. And a potion of invisibility. Now I wonder. Done and done. We can just straight up take. My honor is my way. life. Jacques May darkness prevail. Where to now? Of course. <laughs> Helm with Helm's blessing. Yes. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Let's try the other one. It's locked. Can you open it, dear? What you want? I've done had enough of this. You cannot. Minsk? You point, I punch. But! Yes, fool, I agree. This group could do with a swift kick in the morals. Alright, we can't get that open. But now let's hell. deal with Samantha and Jamie. Yeah! Leave me be, or the guard will have you. Who are you? What are you doing in my room? We're hired killers. We're here to kill you. Now just be silent and we'll quietly split your throat. We're adventurers. Just arrived in town recently. So what's your name? Sorry for bothering you. We'll be out of your room right away. Let's go option two. Adventurers? Wow, have you come to clear out the mines at Nashville? I hear there's all sorts of monsters there. Monsters at the mines, eh? Well, perhaps we'll have to check that out. Thanks. We're not here to talk about monsters. We're here to see you. What's your name? Well, my name's Samantha. I, uh, I wonder why you would want to see me. I'm nothing special. One, you got that one right. See you later. <clears throat> Two, <clears throat> you're a very pretty woman, Samantha. We've heard talk about you all over town. We just wanted to come up here and see if it was true. It's really nice of you to say, but I know why you're really up here, and you won't get away with it. Jamie, get out of the closet. It's not Mom and Dad. It's a bunch of brigands. They're going to hurt me. Help! Are you looking at me? What are you guys Are you up looking to? at me? You step away from my girl, lecherous brigands. If you think you can lay a hand on Samantha and live, you don't know who you're dealing with. I've trained with the guard for a good two years, and I think I'm a little more than a match for the likes of you. Hmm. I might have spoken too soon. Your thrashing must come another time, when I am not naked and weaponless. My dear, even naked, you aren't entirely weaponless. <clears throat> Samantha, my sweet, we really must do something about that dirty mind of yours. More urgently, however, we must run! As they leave, that's fine. We'll leave, too. All right, let's finish looting the other two anonymous farmhouses. And then As we you can will. declare ourselves officially done with both the Nash Kill and the stream.
As you will. All right, in we go. Emma Wen. Yep. Do your job. I've done had enough of this. Yay! My she honor did. is my life. As you will. Weather's been lousy lately. What are you doing in my home? Get out of here before I have to hurt you. Weather's been lousy lately. As you will. I care not. I am gone. Let's talk more fight. Bunt kicking for goodness. Helm, yeah. Weather's been lousy lately. By helm! What now? I want a simple task. My honor is my yeah. Little gold and a silver ring. With Helm's blessing. <laughs> You're a queer fellow. This way. Helm, give me strength. Yeah. What you want? This way. Sheep haven't been putting out lately. What's wrong, son? Hey, what are the bunch of you doing in me home? Get out. You hear me? Get out. Get out of me way, you crummy log head. All right, whatever. By helm, as you will. Yeah, there's nothing else worth caring about in there. So, let's wrap the stream, and the way we do that west of Nashkel. We've got that wilderness area there, but first bring her the high hedge. Offload and buy. With Helm's as ever. blessing. Tiff, if you're watching, I know it's almost 10, but we're still going to watch this show, I promise.
My honor is my with Helm's blessing. Hey, Flint Why here. Why do I live in such a pissant town? All right. Sell all the shit. Our reputation has improved again. From seven to eight, so his items should be even that little much cheaper. How do I keep winding up with Imlin's school case? I mean, it doesn't really matter, but it is irritating. All right, what ifs? Let's. Look for the scrolls I still need to buy. I need, well, I was going to say I need an invisibility scroll. Actually, we need two, but we got the one we're going to get. So. Feel like that's a fairly solid there we go, but I'll be the ammo in back to the scroll case. Let's let Protag me scribe invisibility. And Helm very Give me last strength. thing. Yeah. want to go is this area we've already seen to the west of Nashville. And so very sorry, but we've been going over two hours. Wife is agitating. I've already done as much as I promised. It is time to make an anchor save and end the stream. This has been Let's Play Baldur's Gate. We explored Nashkill. We found a suit of ink egg plate, which is amazing. We looted homes and taverns and solved quests and triggered Easter eggs, and now we are actually exploring everything en route to the Knoll Stronghold, where we allowed Vicky not Vicky, Dinah here, where we allow Dinah here to get murdered. So, thank you all so much for being here. Those of you who joined me live on Twitch, if you're new here and you enjoyed what you saw, hit the follow button so you can see every time we go live in the future. Really helps build up the channel. Also true if you're watching later on on YouTube, if you enjoyed the content, please hit the like button. It really helps with growth and attracting attention. And also, I know that streaming schedules don't match up depending on where people might be, but 
if you subscribe to the YouTube channel, you won't miss any of my content. It all gets ported over there, so please subscribe. Finally, regardless of the platform you're on, I hope you will consider joining our Discord. The link to join the Discord is in the YouTube video descriptions and the Twitch channel descriptions. The Discord is where I make official channel announcements, it's where we discuss what you'd like to see me play, and it's where there's a fun, awesome, growing community of people who love video games just like you and me. Looks like the next stream is going to be Saturday, and I'm currently planning more Baldur's Gate, so hope to see most or all of you there. Take care, have a good rest of your week, and I hope to see you Saturday. Bye-bye.